Welcome to the Stories Are Soul Food podcast, presented by Cannonball Books and Great Homeschool Conventions. Welcome to the Stories Are Soul Food podcast with your two favorites, Andy Wilson and Brian Cole. We're here. We're here with a quick update on the riot funding too. That yeah, looks- things are going well. Things are also going badly and things are going well at the same time, <laughs> which means anytime you're in a campaign, you know, peas fall off the plate, wheels come off the wagons and the wagon train. Right. So there's been a lot of tech issues. So I'll, let me just start with like a, uh, an announcement there. If you've had any issues trying to fund Riot in the Dance, the series, which of course every single one of you should have tried to do because every single one of you should wants to be like Brian. should want to watch this and show other people and and be an investor in it, you know, make tons of money. Uh, if you've had any trouble at all with the portal with the interface from Angel Studios, please email support at angelfunding.com. That's the single most important thing I can say. Right. We've had a ton of investors come on board, a ton of ton of support and it's been fantastic and really encouraging but we've also heard from scads more people on top of that who would like to be involved but are having tech problems so yeah if you're having tech problems with the portal this is probably you're not interested but probably due to the fact that iphones pushed an update that has also been unhelpful Mm -hmm. ios 14 and so a lot of reprogramming has happened and so there's bugs. There's some bugs in the si- in the system, according to Angel. So we're really grateful for the scads of support for the half a million dollars of investment that we've gotten so far, which is phenomenal. But we want more. We want to make more episodes. Yeah. By the time this episode drops, we'll be even more, right? Yeah. It'll be much higher than that, hopefully. Knocking on the door of a, a million bucks by the time this drops, I hope. I should also say we have heard from fond international fans who are unable to donate as of now yeah so here's the thing the if you're an american citizen you can donate you and it's not a donation it's an investment right right so it's not a donation that's important legally if you want to donate money to riot you can absolutely do that you just have to reach out directly to riot you know you could support production via gift i mean that's fine but via the portal, if you want to invest and hold shares in the company and invest, SEC regulations prohibit that investment from foreign nationals. So you have to actually be an American citizen. If you're an American citizen abroad, then that should yeah. be, it should be just fine. If you're running into trouble as an American citizen abroad, then email support at angelfunding.com. So we've had a lot of people help us work out some of the kinks. This was an entirely new build of the portal, uh, what they call the portal by Angel Studios for this campaign. So there's a lot of kinks they've been working out. At the same time, it's been fantastic and the support is great. And we are extremely excited to bring so many partners on as investors in the project. So thanks to all of you who, for whom it did work. And (laughs) (laughs) to, to those of you who had troubles technically, Please email support at angelfunding.com. And to those of you who didn't even think about supporting us, well, you know what I think of you. Here's your second chance to think about it. (laughs) Third chance. I forgive you, but please make amends. (laughs) (laughs) The tech problems remind me of that useful saying, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Right? This is actually really difficult. And the model is incredibly interesting to crowdfund shares, crowdfund investment, as opposed to crowdfunding gift so crowdfunding gift is is a completely different thing than crowdfunding investment and divide you know having a whole sec thing where this is the sale of shares in a company that's going to make these these episodes so no amount is too small do please consider investing those of you who already have you really do mean that that yeah absolutely we've had uh investments over six you know Commitments over six figures, and we've had commitments down. You know, so a lot of people are making a hundred dollars, and we really, we really appreciate all of it. We appreciate partnering with everybody who wants to bring more good content for families into the world. So everybody who's willing to not just want it and want to consume it for free, but everybody who's willing to actually invest in it and create it, 
you know, that's, we've been told that's the 1% and there's, you know, 90% who will consume, you know, it's like a 9% who will be big fans and share and whatever. And, and then 1% will be willing to invest. So we really appreciate everybody who's willing to, to jump in and create something that the ind- the industry never would. Dropping in a little inner ring stuff right there. A, a little extra <laughs> yeah, external sure. motivation. Is that what that is? <laughs> be one of the special ones. Yeah, don't be one of those slacking 90 percenters. Be a one percenter. This is like the, the opposite of what would work in, in lefty circles where it's like, don't be one of the one percenters. Right. Be one of the one percenters. Mark Studdick would be down for instant, <laughs> yes, get instant on in. investment. So we really do appreciate everybody who's been willing to uh, invest. It's a big deal and we appreciate it immensely that you're willing to come in on this project with us. And we appreciate all y'all who tried and failed and ran into some, some buggy tech. Please stick with us. Reach out to support. Try to make it happen. And everybody else, stay tuned. You'll be able to watch it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Nothing wrong with that. But anyway, we're not, we're not even doing Riot today, are we? No, we're not. We just did. Yeah. So that's the, this, this episode is brought to you by the Riot and the Dance. This is a, now officially a presenting sponsorship. <laughs> and required us to talk about it for a minute. But what are we talking about today? Well, I thought one of the m- most popular things to talk about that writers want to talk about is how do you send a pitch letter or <laughs> how do you get people to do products? And I, I kind of think it's the most worthless thing to talk about. Don't you think? So is that why you want to do it? Are we not doing it? <laughs> well, no, I think, I think we should talk about it in the right way. Okay. Let's talk about it and then let's move on and talk about a good book. Because those okay. are the two things I, th- I think you you <laughs> right you wanted to do today. Yeah. First off, a good pitch letter should be able to explain the idea for your book in a couple sentences in an elevator. I mean, that's if you can't, then you need to work on it. Yeah, and the test is you actually have to stand up and say it because I know yeah. so many people who think they can reduce something to a sentence of that, uh, the log line for their idea. And they really can't, you yep. ask them, so what's your book about? And they say, well, uh, it's about this kid who, uh, yep. And it's, and, but you don't understand it's all super important. How could I leave anything out? I have to tell you about the whole world. It's like, well, but the, okay, let me back up and tell you how this world was created. You're like, uh, no, right. Not, not interested. So it is really important to go through the mental discipline of being able to distill your own story ideas and your existing novels into their beating hearts down to the the core where everybody could tell you that sounds great that sounds fun and then the only issue from there is execution like did you execute on the idea and it's really easy to come up with a pitch that just does one thing but it seems like most good pitches for novels always have that they have a one right up the middle and then a secondary element that makes interesting. So it's a time traveling kid, but he's got snakes in his arms. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. So it's basically there are a left, right punch. If you have the one, two, it's situation and character is what I come down to. If you can get situation and character, then you've got the pitch. And so, you know, an overprotected, timid boy, goes to live in his uh, aunt and uncle's Kansas farmhouse and finds 99 tiny little doors in the wall of his attic bedroom. Right. That lead to different worlds. <laughs> yep. Character. Okay. So there's some character, character plus situation. situation. And think about a story. I was actually talking to my, my daughter who turns 18 on this very day, the day of this recording. This recording is also Happy sponsored. Birthday. This recording is also sponsored by the 18th birthday of my daughter. <laughs> we were talking about story last night. And the nature of character story, and I told her it's all about trying to make a baking soda volcano. You know, it, a lot of people just pile up baking soda. <laughs> like mm. they don't ever bother to create the little, the, you know, the little, uh, little plaster, vinegar, the little plaster of Paris mound around a glass bottle, and they don't bother bother to put the vinegar in, and they don't bother to stir, dump it in, and you know, yeah, and let this thing go. So in that, you mean they'd be happy to write a very long story about an overprotected kid. Is that yes. the, ba- is that the baking soda there? Yeah. They just have a long story about an yeah. overprotected I'm kid. Gonna, I'm going to take this kid who's overprotected and eventually he's going to grow. And okay. And so big complicated novels that span 
you know, centuries or half a century, big novels like Beautiful Ruins or things like that, that massive cast of characters and all over the world, you know, all the light you cannot see, you know, spanning huge time and space constraints. Those are really difficult because pressure and confinement is what enables, you know, enable char- enables characters to work. And so starting with a short story and then moving up to longer fiction and then into a novel, you're talking about your novel pitch. You have to, you have to be able to say character situation and these two things immediately generate static electricity in the mind of the listener. They can project, oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of tension there. There's going to be a journey there. There's all, there's a whole thing, you know, there's, there's a whole thing to it and they can fill that in. And then it's just a question of, did you do it? Well, did you execute? It's like, so, Hey, I have an idea for a story about fill in the blank, a retelling of the odyssey for in which fill in the blank. My Odysseus character is an eight year old, eight year old boy. Yep. So the, um, if you start unpacking themes and like going into backstory and everything else, you know, I've got a story about a, a kid who finds a chunk of styrofoam and falls asleep on it, floating on a creek at night and gets sucked under a mountain. Right. Character setting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like there's so much more to Lee Pike Ridge than that. But that if people say, what's that about? That's what I say. Lee Pike Ridge is about this kid, you know, and I don't say, well, the thing is, his dad is dead and. In his journey in the underworld, he finds his dad's remains, but he realizes that he is his father's remains. He is what remains of his father. <laughs> and then he reemerges from the grave after three days in a chapter called Easter. And, uh, but all those things are true. <laughs> yes. See, that's fun because you've taken a good book, but given a terrible pitch letter to it, <laughs> such that it would right. never get published. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, distill, and this is, forget the pitch letter, in your own mind. Yeah. Like in your own mind, set the bullseye in the center of the target. You know, like what, that, is, yeah, that's what, what I mean. is the bullseye? And then, yeah, you get on tons of themes and backstory and world building, all that stuff. Yeah. Who cares about finding an agent or getting the agent to read your pitch letter if your idea is not any good? I mean, it, this yeah. seems like an, an, ex, or an expansion of the rhetorical principle that no one is going to be more excited about your presentation than you are. Right. And in fact, they're going to be less. If they reach your level of excitement. Okay. Here's the bad news, aspiring novelists. Have you ever been bored out of your mind when somebody else tries to tell you their dream? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. All uh, right. <laughs> hey, hey, your friend says, I had a dream last night where I was wearing roller skates and there were jelly beans falling. And you're just like, dude, stop. There's no, there's no stakes. I don't care. I'm not sympathetic in any way. So you had a weird dream. You ate pepperoni. Fine. We've all, you know, found our own dreams interesting and amazing because they happened to us, except for they didn't. And then, uh, <laughs> and we've all tried to tell our dreams to people and other people have tried to tell their dreams to us. And it's boring and awful. And you telling people about your novel is just as bad. Ooh. It is just as bad. I would rather sit down and listen to an 18 year old tell me about their dream than tell me about their novel as a rule of thumb. Yeah. Because it's excruciating. Just because of the lack of so- awareness of what's interesting, yeah. right? Lack of awareness, a lack of ability to make a baking soda volcano. Also, lack of an understanding that someone else will not, cannot be as interested. Yeah. In that. I think yeah. it, it, there's kind of a, an author supposed to see other people's perspectives, but also sometimes authors so, fail to see other perspectives. So my, my daughter last night, I'm just going to spill beans here. She was talking about a story. She just had a character she wanted to work with that is obsessed with trying to be creative as a misunderstanding of creativity. And, you know, so who's trying to be more and more outlandish, you know, just absurd and so on. But she wanted that to kind of play out in the background, like of whatever the actual story is. So she wants a character who is like perpetually escalating to try to be seen and impressive. But she didn't know where she wanted to stick that character yet, in what context and in what place. And so we were talking through the different ways to do it. You know, it's like. See, you don't hate talking about all 18 year old novels. No, because it's not, <laughs> not even a novel. It's a character like, hey, here's a, here's a character. What, where would I. 
where would I stick this character in order to create friction and st generate static electricity and, and make a little storm that is a fictional, you know, a fictional tempest. And so we were talking through different situations. And this was specifically for a, a short piece as opposed to a novel. This was not a mm -hmm. novel idea. But it's anyway, you she wanted to talk about the situation, the contact. Where do you stick this? You know, where do you stick this person? And so she then she mentioned as a side note that she thought about another story about cousins where one's, you know, a feminist lawyer in the city and goes and stays with her cousin on like her her farm, her ranch. And you have one really tough, strong, but truly feminine woman being a wife and a mother, and one who's feeble and complaining and whiny and uh you know and is very patronizing of the of that life mm -hmm. you know so while well, you have the the one who's willing to go gut and prep game and milk cows and the other who is just demeaning of the whole endeavor as as weakness you know when it's a, a, the exact opposite mm -hmm. so that's something where she was like huh, it'd be kind of fun to play like build those two characters and create that situation and, and force them together, you know, force them together in a situation and stuff's going to boil and, you know, spew and everything else. You think about what Rowling did with Harry Potter and, you know, you have the, the kid, this little kid with a lightning scar, which is already great. <laughs> yeah. But then you say there's a little kid with a lightning scar where the world's worst sorcerer of all time tried to kill him and it, blasted back off of his forehead and defeated the unnameable sorcerer and nobody knows why mm. like i'm all right like that's great that's pretty good that's, that's, that's just, very, it's very good that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic i mean that's such a great starting point and i've been in that situation before where as a creator you ask giant questions you don't quite have the answer to <laughs> and i don't think she quite had the answer to it either but that that setup is just great imagine growing up and then she added a little bit of extra with the dursleys and stuff but the introduction to hogwarts where you're this kid and you're famous for having defeated somebody when you were a baby and you don't know how and neither does anybody else so that's great and then you add the setting of hogwarts and this dual world and the death eaters and the return the inevitable return of voldemort and like that you start to build out the situation yeah. and in that case like a theme park you start building out a theme park as opposed to just a tight a tight thing and it's obviously been wildly successful so character situation character situation and part of that situation can be other character like other characters that will create static and and so on so you mentioned talking about uh, till we have faces. We have a, we should probably have a whole episode just about till we have faces. Somewhere. Yeah, but if you haven't read that one, read that one. But the idea of a girl who's really ugly, who, yeah. So she wears a veil constantly out of shame, which gives her a reputation of being stunningly beautiful. You know, so she's this, you know, faceless beauty yeah um and the whole theme of till we have faces and it gets very complex and it's more typological and thematic than a lot of stuff but it's you know these two sisters and this you know teacher and this situation and uh it's a very strange situation yeah and this retelling of cupid and psyche but that's what lewis does and then you have the pevensies and the lion witch in the wardrobe what's the yeah. situation you know they're in the they're in a country house due to the war and you know, girl finds a, a wardrobe that leads into another world. Yeah. And he had no idea at the time why or how that happened. You know, the, the backstory gets built later, uh, which is also great. But that, you know, that situation is fantastic. Yeah. So when you're, when you're talking with your daughter about that, those two characters, now they just need a situation in which they're, they crash together, right? Yeah. Because cause yeah. without, I've heard many pitches of that sort of thing that veer too much into cultural criticism because the person's sure. not trying to write a story. Yep. They're trying to write. That's actually what I told her. I was like, you know, it's really important that if you have your, you know, basically that the, the woman who is in that situation of like the cousins, one's on the farm, she can't be super wise and knowing. She has to be full of doubt and confused. Yeah. And have her own journey of discontentment and this 
temptation is, you know, passing through a crucible of some kind. Both of them have to pass through a crucible and both of them have to be the crucible for the other one. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the thing that makes it really go is the conflict with Edmund. Right. And the, like, I've got a brother and a sister. They both go through and one of them lies about it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. whoa. Like, it's not just that we discovered another world, but then carry this character tension in. And that's what drives us forward and propels us and sets stakes yeah. for later. And like, that is the, like, that is the arc. That's why Aslan ends up on the stone table. That's the whole thing right. is that, you know, that baking soda volcano between a brother and a sister in the context of a door to another world. Right. So anyway, for all of you who want to pitch a novel or write a story, you got to start by being able to put your finger on the bullseye of what that story is. Right. Such that an editor like Brian would say, that's a fantastic idea. I would love to read that. And whether or not you're published is going to come down to execution and your ability with characters and prose, not your ability with ideas. You should also be able to throw ideas away very, very quickly. One of my favorite pitches I ever received was someone who had no clue who we were and sent us The Curse of the Were Lion Husband as the title. Mm. <laughs> and uh, we never, we did not ask to see the whole manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of into that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, and that's, that's yeah, hindsight. Like a, that's, like a, that's like a Pratchett concept. Yeah, exactly. It's like she started out with this idea and just started adding things, you know? Right. Like, oh, werewolf is not good enough. Werelion. It has to be a werelion. I, li- I honestly would like to read that. Yeah. I'll have to go back and try and dig it up. <laughs> but I it guess. also is the kind of thing, if you added a name, an author name to that, then suddenly somebody with talent that you knew had talent, you would yeah. suddenly be like, this is going to, this is going to be a ride. That's the unfairness of publishing that. Yeah. Well, okay. It reminds me of your dad's satire because he's written award-winning satire Yeah, that so many people try to imitate, but they don't understand. Right. What goes into it and then it just all falls apart and they say, but, but, uh, but I made fun of something. Right. But I made fun of something and I'm conservative and but like, you made fun of nothing so much as you made fun of yourself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got played. <laughs> so yeah. Understanding the, I mean, especially people miss on satire, they miss the need for affection. Yeah. And that's ultimately where conservative satire usually breaks down as a lack of affection for the characters. It's just, I want to take these puppets that represent my enemies and I want to smash them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and it just, it flies apart. There you but go. Let's talk about the, the, uh, like the pitch for even jellyfish. Right. So it's a Jonah story about a small town pastor who sent to his personal Nineveh. And that personal Nineveh happens to be a horribly corrupt mega church pastor named Chad Lester. Far more successful. Yeah. Than our Jonah. <laughs> yeah. And so immediately you can, you can be like, that's character and setting right there, right? Everything. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you don't just, even need more of a setting than just two pastors, two pastors, small one, church, yeah. big church, small church, super corrupt, skeezy, mega church pastor that the small faithful guy with the, the nothing congregation is sent to minister to and just does not want to, you know, it's like anybody but him. And that's, that's such a fantastic setup. And it's like done. Right man in the dark like yeah romance romance story a preacher out west in the olden days uh recognizes a woman in the congregation who happens to be the one prostitute he ever visited in his youth and folly and now he's a pastor and she's converted and hmm (laughs) yeah that's a good one that's historical (laughs) fiction with a little bit of a sting yeah a little bit of a sting but it's historical fiction romance happy ending yeah. But a little bit of a stink. Character situation. And character situation with friction. Character situation with baking soda and vinegar. You need them. But it is vinegar, right? Yeah. I was going to say, is it club soda or something? <laughs> club, <laughs> interesting. Baking soda and well, Let us know. Try it out at home and yeah. let us know. Baking soda and vinegar. And then you need to be able to, when you're telling anybody what the idea for your novel is, you want to be able to say, it's baking soda and vinegar. Right. This is the, here's the baking soda. Here's the vinegar. I mean, Ride Sally Ride is the best example. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. A man is asked to babysit his neighbor's sex doll to whom he believes himself to be married. The neighbor, not the the man. Yes. The neighbor believes himself to be married and asks his, his 
fundamentalist believing neighbor to sex doll set and instead he <laughs> as a righteous phineas he takes the sex doll to a baler runs her through a baler at a recycling center and compacts the doll yes compacts the doll destroys and gets charged and is then charged with murder yeah yeah so, so and even though you don't even need to get charged with murder part right. but there's different ways to say that it's like a man is charged with murder because he compacts his neighbor's sex doll <laughs> yeah you know, it's like there's, is it about the neighbor and the man? Is it about the state and the man? Set up the two, set up the two characters where their most friction is going to play out. And in this case, that story probably is the state and bacon soda, volcano. There's the, there's, you know, there's your bullseye. So when you're going to pitch, be able to pitch character and situation such that everybody can see, oh yeah, there's a story there. Like there's a story that's going to happen. There's a thunderstorm over there on that horizon you're pointing to. And I would be interested in reading it because that sounds, that sounds interesting. Do not get sucked back in the backstory. So I, I described 100 cupboards earlier, you know, the timid kid in the attic who finds 99 cupboards behind the plaster. I could add that he's a seventh son. I could add this whole mythology of green men. I could talk yeah, about fairies. I could get into fairies in the other worlds. It's like, but no, that's not the, that's not the bullseye. Yeah. And if that's in my pitch, then oops. It's the same. It's, it's just a good example of showing, not telling. We, want, we don't want to be told what's on the other side of the doors. You want to show us the doors. Yeah, and, if you're and, make, pitch, us, and make us want to walk through it. Yeah, if, the, if you show us the door, then by definition, humans want to open it. Now, you can get much better at pitching than you can get at writing. So, but you have to start there. Right. So, a lot of people can come up with fantastic ideas that they can never execute on. If you want to read Nate pitching something... You can look at the copy for even jellyfish, <laughs> which I remember when you pitched that. I loved that. That was pretty fun. That was right. I was early on in my publishing career when you came in and, and helped us with, with working on some of the copy for even jellyfish. And it's fun to, you know, look at different. Which I forgot about completely. Yeah. Different arrangements. You had his voice crawls over the radio and uh, his books are read by millions before he reads them himself. And some other great lines yeah. in there that just is a fun way of looking at taking ingredients and what happens if you shine this one up. Yeah. And rearrange this one and then uh polish this thing yeah and yeah. then and then add a different ingredient or it's... delete this thing because it doesn't actually add to the static electricity right yeah yeah and especially for something that's a satirical novel which is a genre that has well hasn't passed away is a genre that's definitely niche i would say that it's it's passed away as an official genre there's a lot of novels that are satirical but there's not a section of any bookstore or even on Amazon, I think, that's like number one in satirical novels. Yeah, they're all humor. They get mixed in. I'm yeah. thinking of, um, oh, shoot, forgetting the guy who did Thank You for Smoking. Oh, yeah. And Buckley. Yeah. Charles. Buckley, yep. Maybe something. Yep. Yeah. So, as, as far as it goes, you want to you identify the bullseye and then you can get started on the craft. Right. But uh, when you come up and you say to us at a conference, you say, hey, I, I want to tell you my idea for a novel. And, you know, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the problem is if it's great and if it's tight, then please do. Yeah. And that's the dilemma. Publishers want more good books. If you have good books, yeah. bring them, pitch them absolutely pitch them pitch them to yeah every, I've, every I've, publisher wants stuff i obviously don't know who all's from the story stories or soul food crowd but i've received lots of pitches and i love getting them yeah keep on pitching send them along and you just got to be able to Id identify what's good about your own story yeah i actually i got stopped on the road not too long ago by somebody who asked me if i had like 10 to 15 minutes to Ooh. hear their idea and i said no i do not 10 to 15 yeah that's a, that's a significant amount of time, you know? Yeah. What if you, yeah, replace and the so, dream in there. Do you have 10 yeah. minutes to hear my dream? <laughs> so I had a weird dream. Like, I don't know, are you Pharaoh and are you going to pay me very well? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> and I said, no. And I said, call me when you've got it down to two or three, mm. you know, then I, I'd be happy to hear it. But um, that re really is the problem. If you can't get it down yourself, then it's just not ready. Yep. And if you can get it down, well, that means your work just started. Right. So now you have something that you could actually, you could actually work on. You now, when we had Sam Smith on, we were talking about his just rabbits with swords. Yeah. You know, it's actually, 
it's really like that's the shortest pitch ever and it works so very well that is character and situation in and three world words. and world yeah yeah, yeah I mean, okay we're doing a swashbuckler with rabbits i mean it's it gets you there very very quickly and you're not even getting into the green ember world at all it's just rabbits with yeah swords. now see there's this prophecy that yeah. this rabbit will come back you know yep that would ruin all it. that all that matters but not in the pitch right and it and, and instead in fleshes an idea yeah that is bunnies with swords <laughs> correct bunny rabbits with i like rabbits with swords he like he likes bunnies with swords <laughs> so anyway when it comes to your pitch hopefully this is helpful boil it down boil it down get your character slash characters and get your situation and you know then you're you're about ready you know we said this about pitches but really you also mentioned this is a pre-writing thing yeah that will save you from wasting your time on a novel that no one wants to read <laughs> <laughs> right and i can also say because i've had a few questions asked about specific prose craft issues not wanting just to like hawk things and try to sell stuff the school of fantastical wordcraft is like my oh it's yeah instructional on on the actual writing and exercises and and that kind of stuff so while this podcast is free and we're going to keep it that way and i'm not trying to sell you something i am trying to sell you something if you really have questions about craft and exercises and approach to writing that's probably the best place to start that's where i've laid it out as succinctly as i can and keep reading <laughs> I, i'm happy to try to sell it for you because yes. it, <laughs> because this if if you really are looking for a way to get started on writing a novel there is more to it than just get really good at writing scenes, but that's what you do. Yeah. And, and Nate will show you how to break that down and structure the novel. You can add a few things that you've heard on this podcast here, but really right. that's the next step. You know, if you get that idea and you want to do it. If you're serious. Yeah. That's great. The other thing is if you're serious is actually a huge thing because there are a lot of people who want and are not willing to take steps towards actually pursuing it's hard it's long uh it's it's going to take a lot of effort right uh i've told people often in different writing classes that writing a novel is like deciding to walk to nova scotia you can do it it can be done <laughs> especially if you're in maine but um <laughs> <laughs> or better yet in nova scotia but um i could do it from here it would just be a very long painful track but all of us know how Right. It's just putting the next foot in front of the other. And that's actually kind of what really matters is learning how to walk. If you can learn how to walk when it comes to writing and, you know, shaping a story and distilling it down to the right ingredients, once you've learned how to do that, it's just walking. Like you figure those things out. It's just going from here to there and having the patience to keep going from here to there until you get there. Yeah, another way to say that there are no keys to the writing universe that someone just needs to tell you about and you can suddenly have that novel that's yeah. behind glass right now. Yep. <laughs> or no one's going to make you stop walking to Nova Scotia, <laughs> except right. yourself. <laughs> yep, exactly. And the most depressing, well, I shouldn't say the most depressing, the most depressed people that I talk to, and I talk to them often, are people who have been walking. And they've been walking for years and years and years and they've been generating content, but they haven't actually gone through the process of learning how to, if we're going to keep this metaphor going, learn, learning how to like navigate or guide themselves by the stars. So they've been walking in the wrong direction. They've been wasting their time. They've been generating tens of thousands of words, hundreds of thousands of words, none of which have gotten them anywhere. And they, they have the drive, they have the patience and the endurance, but they haven't figured out how to identify the bullseye of a story and how to structure you know, the actual architecture of a novel, and then how to keep themselves on track. See if you think this is right. I find also that pacing is the hardest thing to teach because you'll get someone who writes this. I would say pacing is the last thing you teach. Yeah, okay, maybe that's but the way. It is, it is really, it is hard, but it, you can't even teach it until you've gotten the basics. Yeah, until you've gotten yeah, through a bunch I'll, of stuff. Because I'll open a manuscript where someone has a story idea and it's just, prose sentence after prose sentence yeah. and lots of action and you just want to say this isn't how books work right for those of you who are impatient i was working on the next chapter of ashtown it's still <laughs> happening i've got this little right in the dance campaign going i've still got a bunch of late deadlines courtesy of my gallbladder surgery i'm catching up okay i'm catching up 
But working in Ashdown last night, and I was thinking, you know, it's really funny how percussive my prose is, how much I don't give a rip about fragments, like how I think I, think yeah. I use fragments more than almost anybody I know. Except your sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because my dad doesn't write in fragments at all. You know, his is all complete sentences. He's getting a little more percussive. He's getting a little broader. But it is, it is funny because when you, you learn how to create, you know, e each brick, each scene that's going to impact the reader in a visceral way, and you can do that over and over and over again. That's what I mean by walking. I can do it, and then I can do it again, and then I can do it again, and I can do it again. And all I need, if I can do that, if I can make bricks, all I need is to know, am I walking in the right direction? Do I know what the beating heart of the story is? And am I, am I serving it? Or am I wandering off track? Yeah. Um, and then pacing is architecture. Right. So pacing in a paragraph or pacing on a page is more just prose right. execution. But pacing overall is the shape. That is the shape, the building. That's the shape of the whole structure. So where are the gargoyles and where are the stretches of sloping roof that just have shingles on them? Yeah. Like that's all, that's all pacing. So start with, um, do start with your bullseye. If you've already written something or if you're halfway into something or you're only thinking about writing something, start with a bullseye. Take some of your favorite books that you've read that are already published and try to identify the bullseye. Be able to be able to identify character and situation, but you'll be able to identify the baking soda volcano very rapidly. Yeah. Think about how easy that is. Even if something as giant as Lord of the Rings, think about how easy that is you know, with a hobbit and a ring, yeah. you know, and the situation is big and giant and fraught, but it's actually, the bullseye is pretty easy to. Yeah. The least heroic character is yeah. given yeah, a this, ring of power to destroy. Yeah. This ring of power that all the kings and sorcerers of the world desire falls into the hands of, you know, this lowly hobbit in the far reaches of the Shire. Like, okay, like there we go. Then we're off. And then Tolkien executes brilliantly, but we don't hear anything about Nazgul. Right. You know, mm -hmm. anyway, bullseye, 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 distill stuff down to a baking soda volcano. And that's your pitch. Yeah. That is your pitch. And then once you can make that pitch, can you deliver on the story? Well, that comes down to your execution, your pros and how focused you can be and how much patience and endurance you have. There you go. But at least you have a good idea at right. that point. I think that's really all we need to do today. Have a good idea. Everybody go forth and have good ideas. Yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, invest in Riot in the Dance <laughs> from our sponsor, the Riot in the Dance. And cut. Done. If you enjoyed this episode, check out Indy Wilson's The School of Fantastical Wordcraft for aspiring writers and word pirates. DVD available at canonpress.com.